All right. All right. What's up, everyone? I'm trying to be prompt here. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Let's talk about some budget gear. I'm about to switch over. Hello, YouTube. How are you? I decided to start streaming. <laughs> this is a horrible... Oh, no. See? This is, this is straight up beginner level stuff here. Uh, <laughs> let me retry this again. Uh, or retry this. Um, what's up, YouTube? Uh, so I came on here. I did, uh, last week I started doing some test streams. Uh, and so uh, I want to make live streams a part of my channel. And so I felt like the first like official stream... I've had like five streams so far, but the first official stream should be talking about what I'm using, you know, being a gear review channel. Um, I want to talk about what I'm using to live stream um, and talk about how you can start streaming with your GH5 or any other uh, digital camera that has an HDMI output. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give maybe a minute or two, just kind of let everybody uh, kind of trickle in that wants to. Um, Something we're else, something else we're going to talk about today, and we might actually have a stream that's longer than 30 minutes, uh, is so much is happening in the world of, uh, uh, of cameras. Um, the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K camera, uh, huge deal in the world of cameras. Um, and, and whether I actually did a stream earlier this afternoon, I was joking with, uh, Mark a little bit that I'm, I'm never going to leave this office. This is just basically where I live now. Um, and, uh, so a lot happening in the world of cameras, but another thing that happened is the freaking Sony a seven S three announcement was announced. Uh, and so I figure it'd be fun to talk about that. Maybe some speculation, um, my goal is to kind of focus on, uh, <laughs> my goal is to focus on, um, on the budget gear. Um, and I want to do, you know, give you guys some insight on some things to stream. I'm going to kind of give you some, some things to think about, uh, and products to look into. Um, but uh, towards the end of the stream, um, we'll talk about what we, what we, want to see out of the a7s3 you know i have some things that you know coming from being in the world of sony uh i'm not that not tempted to buy the a7s3 i'm not buying the a7s3 but there are definitely some things that i feel like need to happen with the a7s3 to make it viable with the amount of competition that sony has right now so as people trickle in, we'll kind of start talking about the, the budget gear for streaming and then get in the conversation about uh, the a7S III. Uh, and if you're joining, um, comment. Uh, go into the, the live chat, comment away, uh, chat with everybody. I, I want these live streams to be a community thing where we all can just hang out, uh, you know, have a good time, crack open some water and enjoy ourselves. Um, that being said, Mark, I can't really talk you out of buying a Sony. Um, I can just say that I don't know if it will live up to the R6 and R5. That's my, my guess. I'm not going to go too far into it, but I don't think it's going to live up to the expectations. I mean, to be fair, we've made the expectations on this camera so much. Like, we're expecting this thing to do magic for how long the camera world has uh, waited for this camera. Uh, but that being said, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so we'll wait maybe like one more minute um, and, uh, and get started here uh, talking about some live stream uh, gear here. Uh, if you're joining, uh, if you're new uh, to the channel... I'm sorry, I just like probably did some weird things with the audio. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, um, I am Anson, first of all. Welcome to Anson & Co. Um, but what I do here is I talk about some budget gear. Um, I am a hobby filmmaker. 
Uh, I sometimes am semi-professional filmmaker in once in a blue moon when I take on client work, uh, but it's basically my art. Uh, I want it to be my my uh, artistic outlet. Um, and so my goal is, since I'm not making money uh, on filmmaking, is to keep the expenses of my gear down. And so that's really what my channel is about, is is talking to you all and bringing you all um, some, some budget gear. Uh, and so if you're new here, consider subscribing. Um, I, I, like I said, I want, I, I put out a video every week, usually about every Tuesday. Um, I am going to try to start either streaming on Thursdays or Fridays, like in the evening. Um, also, if you're new here uh, and you haven't been on some of the test streams, my daughter's room is literally on the other side of this wall. Uh, and so if you hear, she's trying to go to bed. <laughs> but if you hear her running around or yelling, I promise uh, we are not torturing our child. She is just very hyper. So that being said, um, I forgot to change the battery in the GH5. This should be fun. I might have to play a, a race for time on the battery there. Um, anyways, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about how to live stream for under $50. Uh, and I'm going to try something out. You guys let me know what you think. Let's do it. All right. I should have probably have uh, actually watched the playback on that one. I think the intro rolled. <laughs> Learning process. Uh, so welcome to the stream. Uh, we are talking about budget gear under $50. Now, to be fair, this is going to be if you already own a camera that does HDMI out. Now, if you do not own a camera and you want to get into live streaming, uh, I may give you some, some options as far as cameras that do support HDMI out that may be good to look at, maybe more budget friendly. Um, so when we talk about that, you know, uh, something to even just lay a foundation. Why live streaming? Uh, I think a lot of people, when they hear live streaming, they think about uh, YouTubers or gamers. And, uh, you know, I'm not about that life. I don't need to play video games and uh, show people what I'm doing. Uh, I just, you know, I, I'm not that type of person. But in the day and age that we live, where a lot of our meetings are happening online, a lot of interviews are happening online, uh, my wife just uh, had a meeting with a pretty important client through Zoom. I have meetings uh, with important clients through Zoom all the time. And because that's kind of our world right now, you really have an, a, the ability to kind of set yourself apart um, with, um, you know, uh, upping your game as far as the quality of live streams that you have. Uh, and so you know, something to look into, uh, is to, if you're a, uh, you know, a hobby filmmaker, a hobby photographer, a professional photographer, filmmaker, you may already have a camera in your uh, collection or in your possession. Why not use that to help, uh, you know, build the quality of your live streaming of your zoom meetings or anything you may be using live streaming for. So it's not just about YouTubers or gamers anymore. Really anybody can benefit from it. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Um, what's up, Alex? How are you, man? Um, so, I mean, I, I tested this out the other day. I'm actually, I just got this gear and I wanted to talk about it, but I tested it out the other day on a, just a random zoom meeting. Um, most of my Zoom meetings, I, I'm a, uh, a professional trainer, um, software trainer by, by day. Uh, and most of those, I, I still find it awkward, like talking to random people um, and, uh, and seeing it face to face. So a lot of times I'll mute my, or I'll not show my camera. But for those internal meetings, um, you know, it may be beneficial uh, to have that face to face time and put that quality in. Uh, so again, it's not just about gaming. It's not just about YouTubers anymore. Everyone can benefit from it, um, especially creators. You know, if you're in the professional photography, videography world, being able to meet with clients uh, and the easiest thing to show and to, to, you know, have a client know how serious you are about your craft is that first initial Zoom meeting your, your stuff looks good. Uh, and so, you know, creators, I mean, if you're doing zoom meetings, 
don't use your FaceTime camera. Don't use your, your onboard camera. Use what you have and maybe implement some of these things I'm about to show you to really just up your game. So with that being said, what are the items? Uh, so all of us, if, if you're looking at all into streaming and you've considered streaming at some point, you probably have heard about the Cam Link, the Elgato Cam Link. Um, it's a 4K uh, HDMI capture card, uh, allows you to stream in 4K. Uh, if you're like me, that does you no good because my computer cannot handle 4K streaming. Uh, and so uh, it actually is not going to benefit me anything. So looking at a 1080p capture card is going to save you a ton, ton of money. Uh, and so I'm going to start sharing my screen here uh, for just a minute. Uh, and I'm sorry, I think my daughter, why is it this time of day that she decides to have a poopy diaper? I don't know. I apologize. This is like the second stream where I've had poopy diaper situations. Uh, all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my screen here. Uh, so this is the FizeLink HDMI uh, capture card, and it does do 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second. It goes to USB 2, uh, but it's just a simple capture card. Nothing crazy. Um, uh, that, uh, you know, nothing crazy as far as you're not going to have a ton of flashy things on it. Um, it gets the job done. It's what I'm using right now to transmit from my GH5 to, to my computer. Uh, and that's all you really need to just get the camera on there. It's actually transmitting the audio as well. I have a, me personally, I have a Rode NTG that's going into the GH5 and the audio from the GH5 is going into the capture card. Uh, and so if you see here, this is $27. Now I titled this under $50. And the reason I titled it that way is because I didn't want to do like under 30. That's a weird number for me. Um, I didn't want to do 25 and make people think um, uh, that I was just, you know, pulling your strings and, and getting clickbait on here. Um, but you can technically uh, look at probably any of these like basic capture cards for 10, that are 1080p. You can even find like this one. Uh, I looked yesterday. It was a little bit, there was one that was a little bit over $25, but like, this is something you can seriously do for super cheap um, and it will get the job done as far as you know capturing what is in your um, what's coming out of your camera now if you want to take one step further and the reason i did fifty dollars uh, is because you know maybe you can up your audio now I, I wouldn't recommend necessarily going with something like this where it's you know a studio mic like this where um you know i use these for my normal youtube videos um but uh, something that I'll show you as well is maybe a Comica uh, lav mic. Um, Comica is probably one of the more popular budget friendly mic brands out there. Um, you know, they, they make a great product, uh, decent sound. You may not get the same sound as you would like with like something like Sennheiser or even Rode, but for the price, it will definitely get the job done and sound really good. Now I will, potentially be doing a review on a wireless system from Comica uh, that, um, you know, potentially might be a good solution, but that's a little bit more expensive. That's like, I think that one is like $240 or somewhere around there. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend something like that. This will plug directly into your camera. Uh, and so uh, that's definitely something to think about. But if you notice, let me go back to, um, to Amazon here. So we have the capture card that's $27. We have this uh, Comica lav mic that is $22. And so under $50, you have a, a HDMI feed going into your computer uh, as well as a decent audio source. And if you are using something like the GH5, the GH5 uh, in Panasonic generally has really good preamps. And so uh, unlike... Uh, you know, notoriously something like Canon is not going to have the best preamps. Uh, and so you may, I need to get rid of that notification. Uh, you may struggle sound wise with Canon. Um, Sony and Panasonic generally have good preamps. Um, but, uh, you know, so you can basically plug right into camera with those things. Um, I actually bought a 
XLR into uh, to a 3.5 millimeter uh, cable to basically plug my Rode into the GH5, um, and I'm just using the self power on the the mic here. Um, now, something else you can think about. Let me pull this up. Is the newer USB mic. Now, I'm a fan, and I, I as right before I uh, started the stream, I uh, I was like, oh man, I should really uh, recommend newer. Because I really like this setup. I'm trying to find a cheap one here. Um, honestly, any of these would work. Uh, but basically, this will get the mic potentially a little bit closer to you or your subject. Which, I don't have this room sound treated right now. Uh, and so, excuse me. Uh, and so, if I use a laugh, sometimes a laugh can somet sometimes be too far away. Even though it's right on you. It's, it's not as close as something like this. Now, when you have something like this, you want to think about how to uh, kind of muffle the audio so you don't get a lot of pops and S's and P's and B's and all of that. So you want to think about those things, but this will potentially get you a little bit closer to your subject, aka yourself, or if you're filming somebody else doing live streaming, uh, you know, another subject. But look at something like Newer. Newer is a, a good budget brand. Uh, I've done some re uh, reviews for newer. I've used newer products for years, uh, and, and I love newer products. Now, Alex was saying that if you search eBay, I need to flip my phone. All right, we're trying something else here. I'm trying to catch up with the chat. Capture card, cheaper sometimes, got mine for 14 Perfect. <laughs> My daughter's singing Frozen right now. Um, Alex is doing it. Thank, thank you, Alex, for giving some recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. So something to think about is the, the price that I'm showing you here. So the Fize Link, or honestly, if you look at any of these brands, basically these brands a lot of times will take a product and just slap their name on it. Um, I realized that a long time ago with some of the budget lenses that I review is basically like everybody has the same product. And they just, they just brand it. Uh, so I honestly look at the reviews. Um, you know, I'm using the Fize link. That seems to be a pretty inexpensive option, but honestly, if you look at any of these and they have decent reviews, I mean, try it out. Um, especially if you can find it for like $14, um, you know, it is, it's $14 and then maybe like a, a couple cups of coffee, but you know, up your, up your game from that. Now, the other thing is, um, what if you don't have a camera? Uh, well, that's where it kind of is, you know, you kind of want to think about, uh, there's a, a wide variety of things, a wide variety of solutions you can do. I don't have anything pulled up here. Um, but a wide variety of options you have with used cameras. Um, and so if you have something like used camera, I would look at, I, I was going to say like a Sony A5100, but I looked yesterday and those are like $400. Kind of going back to what Alex was saying in the chat, the thing, if you need to buy a camera, buy used. 100% buy used. Um, don't buy a new camera. Don't go over to Best Buy. Now I can understand, I've been in a predicament before where you need something right then, right there. And I get that. And so at that point, you may pay a little bit more, um, you know, to get something right then. But if you have the time to wait, look on something like Amazon, or sorry, not Amazon, but I mean, sometimes Amazon, but eBay, look for some used cameras, anything that has an HDMI out. Um, you know, technically, you don't need... Um, you, yeah, you can look at the refurb store. Um, it, <laughs> Alex is saying majority of my cameras are used. My GH5 is used. I lucked out and got a decent price on my Blackmagic uh, new uh, from a local store. Um, but yeah, my GH5 is used. Um, and, and honestly, for the longest time, I bought everything used. Um, something to look at is, or something to consider. And this kind of goes into why I chose the GH5 for streaming. Because I do have a Blackmagic. Um, I have a Blackmagic Pocket 4K, and I love that camera. Um, and I, w I want to use that camera for almost literally everything, to the detriment of sometimes 
getting shaky footage and, and everything. And so, um, but the reason I will willingly use the GH5 and actually uh, gravitate to the GH5 for streaming is because of the monitor. Um, so with the GH5, it has a flip out monitor and it monitors things like focus peaking. It monitors things uh, like your exposure levels, um, your audio levels. And that's a huge thing. If it can, um, sorry, I, I'm like watching the chat and I'm trying not to get super distracted, but I am I am like one of those, uh, like uh, it just anything flashy will distract me. <laughs> so um, yeah, so if anything, typically uh, Love First was asking uh, if a camera can't output uh, HDMI, um, then that means I can use it for live. It can't output the HDMI. I think I know what you're asking, but basically the camera, the minimum quality has to be that the camera can output HDMI. Uh, if it can't output HDMI, you're going to have a huge issue. Um, but uh, the other thing to think about, beyond just um, no, going back to what I was saying, I'm sorry. Um, beyond just outputting HDMI, look at something, I preferably would suggest something that has a flip out monitor. Um, you know, maybe something that has a flow out monitor that actually has you, gives you some details, which is actually why I looked at the Sony 50, uh, 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 A5100 because it has a flip up screen. Uh, it has an HDMI output, has a flip up screen. And honestly, that is, that camera is, I don't even know how old it is, but it's definitely an older camera and that will get the job done. If you're in a Panasonic world, you really like Panasonic, look at some of the, uh, you know, Panasonic options. Um, and, and to Alex's point, some of these cameras also support straight out of camera now um, uh, streaming options. Panasonic does it. I believe Panasonic right now is only PC. Um, I think they did like an ad hoc, like uh, kind of like a, a temporary fix for Mac. Uh, but I read some reviews and it's basically like their uh, like remote capture um, uh, app. It's not really meant for live streaming, so it's kind of like a makeshift deal. I think Canon's finally went to Mac, uh, but something to mention about this card is it does, and you know, the card that that's coming up in the chat is this one specifically does work on Mac and PC, and that was a big thing for me because I have a Mac, um, and so some capture cards may work on PC only, um, but this capture card definitely works on Mac as well. Uh, but going back to the camera, big thing, honestly. Look for something that's inexpensive, especially if you're not trying to get into maybe photography or videography, but you just want something for better quality streams. Look at something that's just easy to use, inexpensive, and, if, and has HDMI out. And I realize those three things are a large task in and of itself. Uh, me personally, whenever I have somebody that is newer to videography, photography, and they're looking for something easy, I look to Canon. I think Canon probably has one of the easiest systems right now. Um, their menu system is easy. Um, their autofocus is fairly reliable depending on what model of camera you get. Um, my, this one's probably on the more, more on the pricey side as far as if you're just looking for something streaming wise. Um, but I, one of the cameras I always recommend for new photographers, videographers is the Canon M50. It's a great beginner camera. It's a great YouTube camera. And it's a great camera for streaming as well. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yes, a wall, wall power. I'm currently feeling that pain right now. I'm watching my GH5 battery go out because I still haven't been able to find out if I can actually power the GH5 while using it through the mains. Alex, if you know how to do that, let me know in the chat because uh, I still haven't figured that out. I know I black magic. I can power it into the mains, but I, I, I was reading that I can't power the GH5 into the mains while I'm using it. Um, and it seems kind of like a, an oversight, but that also may explain why the battery is amazing. But Anson forgot to change the battery before he started the live stream. So I'm on two bars right now. Let's see if he, let's see if it lasts. Um, but that being said, um, you know, I don't want to run off in too much of a tangent, but basically look for a camera. Uh, you know, I would look at Canon. I would look at Sony just from the, just from the fact of autofocus. You know, if you're new to cameras, I wouldn't try to find something, um, I'm all power all the time. 
I may have to ask you about that later, Alex. Uh, but I wouldn't try something um, that you had to manual focus. My GH5, I'm manually focusing the shot. Um, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm constantly adjusting my shot, um, and and I, I prefer that. I prefer it. it's it's trustworthy. If something happens with the um, uh, with the uh, you know focus, it's my fault. It's not me just trusting the camera and it not doing what I want it to do. Um, so that's just me. That's personal preference. Um, but uh, that being said, you know Sony, Canon have great autofocus, um, and uh, you know so look look in those brands, and then just like I said, look look at something used. Um, one that comes to mind, but it doesn't have a flip out screen is the Canon EOS M. It has a mic jack. Um, it has a HDMI out. And so that will get the job done and you can find it for under like $200. The only problem is it doesn't have a flip out screen or even flip up screen. Uh, but you know, uh, if, if you can find a solution for that, it's a really inexpensive option. Uh, maybe again, the, the Sony, uh, a5100, but again, find that used. I have no idea why that camera is still $500 in some places, um, but it is. So don't buy it new. All right. So that being said, so, you know, again, check out the, um, the capture card. I'm going to leave a link, uh, if I haven't already to the capture card. Um, and, uh, you know, that's going to give you an option for a capture card under, un really under like $30 and then maybe like a USB solution. Um, will help you kind of get a better audio. I do want to kind of go through what I'm using uh, for my setup. Um, and this is where if you are a gear nerd uh, or like, not, I mean, it's not like fancy stuff, but, um, you know, if you're interested in gear, uh, you know, this will be for you. Um, but if you are kind of just here trying to figure out what to get to potentially up your Zoom meetings, live streams, Again, check out the capture card. I'll leave in the description below. I'll leave some mic suggestions as well. Uh, all those, both of those things you should be able to get. I'm going to try to keep it under $50. Um, and then I may leave some camera recommendations as well if you need a camera. Um, so that being said, um, that, that's going to be a solution I would have if you're trying to spend under $50 to start streaming. Uh, if, like I said, if you already have a camera, boom, $50, you're good to go. Um, so, <laughs> what RGB light am I using? Trick question? It's not RGB light. So, getting into the gear that I'm using, I do have an RGB light, which is amazing, and I'll tell you about it. Um, but uh, right now, for my setup, this is what, and, and I don't have any extra camera, so I'm just basically describe what's going on. Uh, my lighting, let's talk about that first, since Alex asked about the, um, uh, the RGB light. So what I'm using back here is actually a Godox SL60W. Uh, and when I bought it from Pergear, um, they gave me the um, uh, gels. So I'm just using a blue and green gel to get the teal. Uh, so uh, that's really all I'm, all I'm using. If you do want an RGB option, check out the Godox. Uh, oh, God, I'm blanking on it now. The R1 uh, is their RGB option. Amazing light. I did a review on it. Uh, somewhere on my channel, but amazing. Um, other light, just did a review on this bad boy. The Godox SL150W Mark II. Um, it is whew, such a good light. Um, currently, if my daughter wasn't screaming, I would be quiet so you can listen to this light, but there's no noise coming from this light because the fans are completely off. Um, so that is one of the big selling points for this light is the fact that you can turn the fans off. And if you are looking at a streaming setup and you're in a small space, that is ideal because you won't pick up fan noise. This 60W back here has loud fans. I can hear it right here and it's like a good five feet away. Uh, so, um, well, voice cracked. Um, but the SL50, SL150W, that was actually this week's video on my channel. Uh, so, uh, I'll probably leave that in the description so you can check it out maybe in the end card. Um, but check that out. Just did a review on that. So that's my lighting, um, audio. I am using a Rode NTG4 plus, um, which, uh, the plus, I forgot what the plus gives me. 
I should probably have just bought the NTG4, uh, but this one was on massive sale because it was massively used. I bought it from a rental house and it was like $150, which this uh, mic is normally like $300, I think, somewhere on there. So I got it really good deal because it was super used. Uh, so I'm using that, and that is plugging straight into my GH5 uh, using an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable. Um, I am using a Sigma 18 to 35. Alex, I know that's one of your favorites. Uh, and Alex, because of you, I actually bought the the um, Nikon version with the Nikon Speed Booster, the uh, um, Viltrox one. So amazing setup, especially if you're uh, you know all about manual focusing. The Canon one is awesome. Uh, but it's way more expensive than the Nikon version. Uh, and if you're already manually focusing everything, uh, the uh, this is a great, great option. I love it. Um, and it on, I said this in my first like test stream, um, the fact that this lens notoriously is so sharp, uh, it kind of helps with the fact I'm streaming in 720. So uh, love the lens. Um, beyond that, uh, I am using, this is going to be, this is the most like makeshift thing I have going on right now. Oh, I can't pick it up because I have a zip tie on. I'm not even going to try it. Um, but the, I am using a Jollycomb number pad. It's a generic USB number pad uh, for, um, uh, for my stream deck. So I can switch between my scenes and so I can go like logo. Hanson's camera. Oh yeah, if you want to follow me on social media, I have not put that up all night. So let me put that up. Uh, so, you know, a couple options that you have in there. Um, that's really the gear that I'm using. I'm trying to think of anything else that I'm using. Obviously, I'm using my 2013 iMac. It is struggling along. Um, so, uh, the that's the gear that I'm using. Why did I choo choose the GH5? I, I started talking about this earlier. Um, the reason I chose the GH, GH5 over the Blackmagic for streaming comes down to the monitor. Uh, if I wanted to monitor what's going on, I think my daughter's standing right at her door, like screaming out. Um, if I wanted to monitor the Blackmagic, I basically am either daisy chaining monitor like HDMI uh, options or finding like a splitter for HDMI and it just seems like a headache. Uh, so the fact, uh, and honestly, I'm moving a lot of my creative projects to 100% black magic. Uh, and so it gave me, honestly, it just gave me an excuse to use the GH5 and I'm really loving it for live streaming. Uh, so if you have a GH5, it's a great live stream camera. Um, I mean, uh, for that matter, if you don't have a GH5 and you're looking at like a good, uh, you know, camera that does solid video, a solid codec, robust video, GH5 is amazing camera, amazing camera. But even if that's out of the price range, look at the GH4. I picked up the GH4 before I picked up the Blackmagic, and the only reason I, I got rid of the GH4 to pick up the Blackmagic was because it's kind of my dream camera, and I had an opportunity to buy it, and so I was like, I got to do it. So um, it's a, I, have, I have low expectations. That's My dream camera was a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. <laughs> but it, it is. Uh, and so, uh, I bought it. Um, but until then I was using the GH4 amazing camera. Honestly, I think it has, a, I mean, it has a ton of the features that the GH5 has with a couple exceptions here and there. And then obviously the IBIS amazing on the GH5. Why is my social media icon still going? I'm going to go back there. Um, Sorry, I got a question. Uh, where do you put your sharpness and noise reduction in the GH5, even though 720 does not look digital? That's my dream camera. Uh, I actually, uh, love first, I'm literally going off the standard natural profile right now. Um, I I didn't even go into like Cine, Cine D. Um, I don't even have a log for the GH5, which I really should. I think it'll get me more excited about the GH5. Um, but uh, it is straight up just the natural profile as it is out of box. I did um, throw, I did take a test image and throw that into DaVinci Resolve and do some quick color grading, um, which is what you're seeing now is the color grade that I chose. Um, and uh, I might do another stream on, on my process and getting that done. 
Um, but easy, easy solution there. But yeah, it is straight up just the natural profile. No, no adjustments there. Um, all right. Chris Sullivan says, that's my dream camera. I want raw, more raw. I use ESM one, M two raw with magic lantern. Dude, that ESM, e EOS M great camera. I, I actually was more upset of getting rid of that than my, some of my Sony cameras that I did when I, when I moved to micro four thirds. Um, Turn the sharpness and line right down, right down. Awesome. You guys are pretty active tonight, and I love it. I love it. Uh, so that's my my live stream setup. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, if you guys are still here and want to talk about it, natural no natural profile is great for streaming. Thank you. Um, it really was the best. So Cine D for me was too washed out for streaming. I I, I mean. I'm at the end of the day still throwing a LUT into OBS, but um, I just I felt like there was way less to actually uh, move around with with a natural. Um, I've I think I said in one of my other streams there's another GH5 enthusiast Caleb uh, Hoover uh, on YouTube that he put out a video about using just natural profile uh, more often. Uh, so yeah. Mark, you're waiting on bubble tea. I don't blame you on that, bro. That bubble tea is amazing. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we've got the live stream gear, uh, and I want to switch gears a little bit and, and please, if you guys still want to talk about some of those live stream gear, like talk about in the chat. The other thing I want to talk about, -da 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 -da, the a7s three. And I realized that everyone in this chat probably is not a Sony user. Um, and, and so I, I want to talk about it from an aspect of like, should we be, should as, as potential, I think from everybody, I know Mark is a Canon user, uh, Alex, you're a Panasonic primarily love first. I think we've talked about you being a Panasonic user. Um, Chris, I don't know. Uh, you just said you use, you use the EOS M. So you're Canon. Uh, so I think we have a, actually have a good, diversity here. I think we have no Sony shooters in here, but I think it's worth talking about. Um, I'm a Sony user. Uh, Harrison Family Vlogs. What Sony do you use? I got first mass now more and more days. But Vlog, yeah. V Here's my problem with Vlog, Alex. I have to pay for it, and I've never made... There's like random things that I need for my production YouTube. Um, that's really the only thing I'm doing production on right now. And there's a lot of like necessity things I have not pulled the trigger on. C-stand. Haven't bought a C-stand yet. Really need a C-stand and I have not bought one. Um, the v Vlog is the other one. And I'm just like, I need to buy Vlog because I think I get more, way more excited because I use the film profile on the black magic. And I love moving those colors around. I love, uh, the post-production side of the, of everything there. And I think I get more excited about the GH five with V log, but I just can't, I can't bring myself to spend the hundred dollars. I just, I, I, I need to, but M 100 EM one, if you want. Awesome. I think it's so sorry to pay for V log should cost camera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, I think, and that's, that's the hard part, right? I think uh, some of the newer Panasonic cameras come with V-Log. And so I'm just like, really? Really? Uh, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. I like Cine D, but I think I would probably have more fun with V-Log. But that being said, natural is is, is pretty awesome. Um, okay, so Harrison Family Vlogs. I have 6400 and 6... Amazing cameras, uh, honestly. That you probably have my favorite Sony APS-C cameras um, right now. Um, you know, the 6400, I mean, it's basically the 6600 without IBIS and a couple of other things. So you have a great pairing. Great pairing of... Um, have you seen the new Blackmagic camera? Yeah, Bobby. I did see the Blackmagic camera. I'm pumped on it. Are you pumped on it? I actually did a live stream talking about it today. So once you're done with that one, go, go watch that one. Or once you're done with this one, go watch that one. What's up, Bobby? How are you? Um, but yeah, so Harrison filmed me vlogs. Um, I, I love the 6400, 6600. Um, I, think, I think Sony has gotten a lot of crap for color science. Um, and I think something that the 6400, 
and even arguably the 6100 and 6600 is help fix that. Um, and so those are definitely great cameras. Um, yeah, 6400 for webcam, amazing camera. And honestly, if you're looking at really like a good production, um, good quality 4K, good autofocus, like look at the 6400. I mean, it has no IBIS, but you don't necessarily need IBIS if you're doing streaming because I literally have my camera on a desktop tripod right now. So it works out for me. Um, great cameras. Uh, so that being said, that being said, uh, let's see if I had, there's any other comments here for videos for a game. Uh, yeah, Bobby, the Ursa mini pro 12, uh, if you guys, so I'm going to drop this in here and I, I did do a stream on this earlier. 12 K Ursa mini pro amazing. And here's the thing. And I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go into this because we're talking about the a7s3 and I want to talk about that for a little bit, but the Ursa mini pro the thing that blew my freaking mind is the fact that it's 12K up to 60 frames per second, 8K or 6K up to 110 frames per second, and 4K up to 220 frames per second, all in Blackmagic RAW. Mmm, yes, please. Like, I want that camera so bad, but it's also $10,000. Not trying to spend that kind of scrilla, so... Just pop uh, uh, pooped on Canon, bro. I, they just, yeah, they did just poop on Canon. The R6 and R5, they were like, "Hey, <laughs> that's cute. We can do 12K." I love that. Uh, Bobby was talking about how it's basically like no one's. I did say this in that stream too, as well. Like the Canon R5 and R6 are just a completely uh, different option. Um, it, it's a different audience. Uh, it's the DSLR audience versus the the high production cinema camera audience, and I think there's a lot of blend in there, um, but I think for the most part they're they're pretty pretty different audiences. Um, now, when Canon is pushing towards the um, small footprint cinematographer, then that's where it gets in trouble. Um, but at the same time, like uh, they're just it's it's a little bit apples and oranges. But yes, they did say, we see your 8K uh, and we'll raise you some. So uh, 18, so Mark was mentioning uh, with the new 18 to 1 compression, I need to read more about this because that blew me away because right now I can do up to or as little as 12 to 1 compression, but 18 to 1 compression, like literally one of their tags, I swear we're going to talk about the A7S three here in a minute, uh, but literally one of their tags was like, uh, you know, shoot raw f and edit on a on a laptop or something like that. And I'm just like, 18 to 1 compression just blows my mind. Um, so, okay, so Alex was saying, it's not the color science necessarily of Sony that sucks. It's the codes. 8-bit uh, sucks for color grading. So that brings me into, okay, so if you haven't heard, if, you know, there's a lot of news with Blackmagic going with the, or Ursa Mini Pro, but there's also been an announcement of an announcement of the A7S III. Uh, so I think it's the 28th of July they're going to be announcing the A7S III. I think it's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, which I have already basically asked off for work that day because I want to do a, a reaction live stream um, to to talk about to talk about everything. So I wanted to open it up uh, and kind of talk about what are the things that we need to see from Sony to make this not a complete failure. Because if I'm being honest, I feel like this camera is not going to deliver. And maybe that's my, you know, my negativity there. Um, knowing that over the last couple of years, I think someone said it when the R5 and R6 was announced, but like, I feel like Canon and Sony switched where Sony's like, oh, we know we probably should do this, but we're not gonna. Um, Chris, thank you for joining, man. You have a great night as well. Um, but um, I think with everything going on, uh, you know, Canon and Sony have switched to where Sony's just like, we know we should be doing these specs, but we're not going to. Uh, and it and it bothers me too because it's not the fact that like the specs they should be putting into their cameras are not necessarily like groundbreaking specs. Um, you know, 
specs that the GH5 has had for years, things like 10-bit 422 internally, if you can give me that, you should have given me that like two years ago at this point, maybe a year ago. You know, excuse me, I feel like they have this opportunity with the um, with the A7S III to to basically take that control back uh, and take that that flagship you know we are the leader in mirrorless cameras um, back but I I just my gut feeling is it's not going to uh, so you know you guys we'll, we'll kind of chat about this but what are some of the things that you guys need uh, that are deal breakers or deal makers for the A7S III I I know me personally it's not even in my like uh, I'm not expecting to buy this camera. Uh, you probably would see me buy more the Ursa Mini Pro before I bought an A7S III. Um, moving away from Sony, uh, I, I've kind of just when I started getting into like Panasonic, I, I just I got over Sony. Um, Sony's are great cameras; they're amazing cameras. But just for my personal preference, I just it, they're not doing what I want. Uh, Bobby was saying he wants a flip out screen. I think with the ZV-1, there's a possibility they can do a flip-out screen. I don't know if they're going to because they have yet to do any type of flip-up screen, flip-out screen on their pro full-frame cameras. Haven't seen it yet. I mean, they've had the flip-up screen. I mean, they've had the flip-up screen technically since the A5100. I think maybe even before that. And that's the only one I can remember. Um, but... They've had an opportunity to put it in some of their full frame cameras and just haven't. Um, and I don't know if it's just like how they see the the flip out screen. You know, is it <coughs> is it subject to breaking or you know whatever? But like, yeah, as a YouTuber or even a you know content creator, I mean, a flip out screen would definitely be a thing. Definitely be a thing. I agree with you on that one, Bobby. Um, Mark was mentioning 4k, 120, better IBIS, uh, fully articulating screen, less green cast, uh, 10 bit internal raw. Man, those are, I'm not even expecting that, but those are pretty much what I'd look for. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I like that you put IBIS, um, because I have a huge pet peeve on Sony IBIS. Um, <laughs> they don't have a full out screen, the nerds will write. Um, but, uh, Sony IBIS is... I just almost rather they not have it. When when I used Sony and I got my A7 III and there was IBIS, I was just like, yes, I'm never gonna have shaky footage again. And and so like I you know I went along my way and of course had shaky footage, but then when I pick up the GH5 and that IBIS performs, like you see what IBIS is supposed to be, um, and. I honestly, I, I feel like Canon didn't do a ton of IBIS in some of their cameras because maybe they couldn't ha perform at the level of something like a Panasonic or even Olympus, uh, which is known for IBIS as well. And so, but Sony has put it in there. It's just not good IBIS. Um, now, one can argue, you know, GH5 is a micro four thirds sensor versus a full frame sensor. You just, it's way more room for the mechanics around, you know, better IBIS, but uh, is still like if you're gonna put it in there, you know, make sure it's good. Um, Greencast. I have not seen. I have not noticed Greencast in Sony footage. Uh, funny enough, my Blackmagic has a, a, a huge issue with Redcast. Uh, it's weird. Like every time I color grade, I have to take the reds out. Um, 4K 120. I do not think we're getting 4K 120. I think we're gonna get 4K, maybe 4K 60. I don't think we're gonna do 120. Um, but here's the other thing. So like, let's say, let's say this camera has uh, 4K, 4K 60, maybe 10 bit 422 internally. IBIS is the same, maybe no flippy screen. Would you buy it if it was $2,000? Like that's the other question. Because the R5, or no, sorry, the R6 $2,500 it has all these dope features, but you know, $500 more. If it's priced similarly with the A7 III and how that was, that was very aggressively priced for that camera, would you still buy it? That's the question, too. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, Flippy simple menu. <laughs> Flipping simple menu set up. So 
Bobby was talking about the menu system. I actually don't mind the Sony menu system, especially how they upgraded in the 66 and 6400 and 6100, basically their new line of cameras. It's a little bit more simple. Um, I think the thing that people get caught up on with Sony menus is the fact that there's so much to them. Uh, there's just a lot of customization, and I actually like that. Um, yeah, it's a little bit harder to find things, but I think, uh, you know, I think that comes with just getting familiar with it. Definitely not as easy as the Black Magic, where literally everything's like touch screen, and I, I don't have to hardly ever go into the menus. I literally just touch on everything. It's all amazing. That's another thing I would like to see is better touch touch screen capabilities. Um, advertise five stops, but more like two. But yeah, uh, Canon wait till they could get. Yeah, Canon did wait till they can get right. So I, I, you know, one thing I mentioned in my Canon R five and R six video or live stream was, you know, I'm curious about how the uh, IBIS would work, and I my lovely daughter. Um, but I did watch a video, the Peter, the Peter McKinnon video where he was straight up just like testing it, like going on a, like a dirt path and it was very stable footage. And so I, I feel like it's going to perform. I feel like it's going to be good. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, the R5, R6 are going to be up there. So I, I'm, I'm really hoping, I don't think Sony's going to up their game on IBIS. I think they, they see that they have IBIS and they're like, we've got IBIS and that's it. I, I kind of like Canon, I wish they had waited on the IBIS and made it really good uh, and put that out. But I think because they have IBIS in there, it's kind of like a checkbox for them where they're, they're not going to worry about it anymore. Uh, and so hopefully, maybe I'm wrong on that. But again, that's just speculation and the fact that I'm trying to drive dialogue with everyone. I'm trying to be the devil's advocate on this one. Uh, for 2K, No. I would not, Mark was saying, for two for $2,000, I would not buy the camera with those specs. They need massive improvements to compete with a 2K. Uh, otherwise, I save a bit more and get another R6. Oh, yeah, you got the R6. I forgot you got the R6. When is that actually shipping? Is it shipping time sometime soon? I don't know. Uh, side note, uh, Bobby, uh, if you want to buy the Ursa Mini Pro, it's currently <laughs> on... I think my daughter just, like, threw a chair against the wall. That literally scared me. You saw that. Um, but uh, you saw um, Ursa Mini Pro. Uh, it's available at Adorama for $10,000. Uh, so, um, yeah, August 30th. Ooh, August 30th. We're we we're just talking about instant gratification the other day. That's got to that's gotta be torture. So, yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, I'm, I'm excited. And it's the same thing I said with the, the Ursa Mini Pro stream. I may not personally be into Sony. I may be a, a convert from Sony uh, and not looking back. Um, but what I am excited about uh, with, um, with Sony's announcement, with Blackmagic's announcement, even though both of these cameras are not ones that I'm going to personally buy. They're not even in question whether I'm going to personally buy them or not. Um, what I do love about it is it is driving the technology of the industry. Uh, and so when Canon puts out the R5 and R6 and something in that form factor is doing the, the um, you know, the things that the R5 and R6 are doing, uh, then, you know, that's going to make Blackmagic look and it's going to make Sony look and it's going to make Panasonic look and say, we need to keep up. Uh, and so that's what excites me about this. Uh, the Ursa Mini Pro, way out of my budget. But the fact that they're putting a 12K sensor that is designed for Blackmagic RAW in the camera means that down the road, something that is in my price range is going to benefit from that. Um, and so that's the same thing with the A7S III. This is a camera I'm not interested in. Uh, I am going to live stream it. I'm going to react to it because as a gear review channel, I feel like that is something that is just... I, I want to give my opinion um, and I have a medium to do so. Um, and, uh, and, you know, give all sides to that. Uh, so shameless, shameless plug, join that live stream, please. Uh, but that being said, you know, I, I'm excited about the a7S III. Um, I'm excited for Sony shooters. Uh, one of my friends is a Sony shooter and I asked him today, I was like, yo, are you buying the a7S III? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm selling my a7S II and going to be ordering that. Um, and so it's really exciting for Sony shooters. And I think, you know, you have to be careful. We live in a, in a world where we're so easy to say Canon, Panasonic, 
uh, Black Magic, um, you know, Olympus, Sony, we're just diehard brand loyalist. That's not even a word. We're loyal to our brands. And I think we have to be careful in that to know that the success of these brands overall helps us all. And so we don't necessarily need to say, you know what? F Sony. I hate Sony. That may be like personal preference for some people, but what Sony's doing is going to make Canon do something better. And what Canon's doing is going to make some make Panasonic do something better. Uh, and what Panasonic's doing some doing, you know, it's going to make uh, you know, well, Olympus can't do anything anymore, but rest in peace. Uh, but it make Black Magic do something better. Um, I mean, hell, we just uh, loyalists. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, one thing that I was talking about today with the Ursa Mini Pro stream was, I mean, look at the, look at Zcam. Two years ago, you would not consider a Zcam potentially unless you were like an early adopter. Now, people that are Canon fanboys, Sony fanboys, uh, are looking at the uh, Zcam E2 F6, I think that's the code for the camera, uh, but um, or the naming for the camera, but they're looking at that camera because it's full frame, what is it, 6K? No one was really buying into Zcam two years ago. And before that, no one was looking at Black Magic before they started pushing the envelope with the tech they were putting into their cameras. Uh, and so Everyone benefits when people like this and people like Sony and Canon put out gear, even though they're not the brand that you align yourself with. So we all need to be careful, and it, it's a very slippery slope, so to speak, uh, to just be like, I am diehard this brand. Now, that may be your personal preference, and you may only use that. I love Panasonic. I love Blackmagic. I, I don't foresee me going back to Sony. Uh, I like Canon. This is the first time in my life where I will gladly recommend a Canon camera, and not even because of the R6 and R5, but because they're great cameras. And I didn't, I wouldn't do that when I was a Sony fanboy. I wouldn't. And so, being careful in knowing that, like, you have everyone has their preference, but you know, know that every one of these cameras is. There's no perfect camera. There's a whole channel, conspir camera conspiracies, that is in the hunt for a perfect camera, and it's just, it's not there. Unless you're using like something like the X-T4, um, then that potentially is the perfect camera. But, uh, I don't know, why have I not named Fujifilm this entire stream? I've named all these other brands that haven't named Fujifilm. Of, of course, eh, whatever. At any rate, okay, it's, it's, it's coming up to time. I don't want to keep you guys too long, and I'm about to go game. Uh, and relax and decompress. And I, I say that, but I lie. I'm actually turning around to plan tomorrow's video um, or filming tomorrow's video, um, which, uh, again, another shameless plug, I am going to be doing a video this week uh, for my finished video. I, I do a weekly finished video every week. Uh, this week is the 7 Artisans 7.5 millimeter 2.8, and it's going to be a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so if you're interested, check out that review. That will be up Tuesday, but I start filming the talking head for that tomorrow. So I got a plan for that. Mark says, I've been looking for the Z cam for a few months, specifically the E2 M4. I don't, is the M4, that's the micro four thirds mount. Is that, is that so 4K though? Is that 4K 60? I can't remember what the specs are on that one. There's a lot of different versions of the E2. And so I can't, I can't ever keep them straight. I know at one point there was like the E2, C, which was like their super budget camera. I think it had a micro four thirds and everything. So awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, this has been fun. This is the like the first official Anson and Co stream. It's, it probably is a little bit longer than I'll probably normally do them. Um, I've said this in a couple other streams. My wife sews in this room right over here, and I'm currently preventing her from doing that. So I'm going to go let her take over the room. Uh, but thank you guys for joining. Uh, thank you to my daughter for not causing too much of a ruckus. Um, E2C, Micro Four Thirds, and $800. That is super tempting. Um, with that being said, again, thank you guys for joining. Uh, follow me on social media, Anson & Co., Instagram, Twitter. Uh, if you're into budget gear, um, uh, you know, if you're into... Uh, you know, learning about gear that's out there that is probably not being talked about by a lot of like, um, 
you know, bigger YouTubers, because we're all talking about the major brands, uh, check out my channel. Uh, I check, I, I review a lot of budget gear. Um, you know, so if you are like me and you're a hobbyist or if you're a professional, uh, but need something on a small budget, check out the channel, give us, a, give me a subscription, check it out. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for joining and we'll see you here next time. Peace.